Usually here on the FM Scout channel, we'll give you guys some of the best wonder kids to sign. We tell you about the best bargains and cheap beasts that you can get in your game. But today we're doing something a little bit different. We'll be pointing out 10 players that you shouldn't sign in FM24, whether it be because of obvious reasons or some things that you might not realize, like hidden attributes that make players super injury prone or not very consistent. We do a version of this video every single year and generally you guys tend to respond well to it. So let's check out our 10 picks for FM24. And we're going to start with the most controversial pick of the whole lot, just to get it out of the way. This is, of course, Paolo Dybala playing for Roma with great attributes all around. One of the most talented players of the last decade, even if he hasn't been the most consistent with it. And actually, for a player that's got a few years left in the tank in Football Manager, at first, he does seem like a really good pick. He's got a release clause for foreign clubs of £10 million or so. So if you are playing outside of Italy, you can get him straight up for that fee. Of course, his contract is going to be quite pricey but you can get him for that amount. But obviously, on paper, as much as he looks like a good player, he's in this list for a reason. And this isn't me saying you couldn't have a good time of Dybala. For all of these players, there's of course a chance that they could be very good for you. For example, players that might not enjoy big matches on most occasions might have a few good big matches for you. Players that might get injured on most occasions might never get injured for you. But in general, Paolo Dybala, if we use him as an example, if we go to his hidden attributes, and by the way, this is the only time I'll actually show the hidden attributes I don't want to spoil it for every single player but if we have a look and we go down to his injury proneness you will see he has a rating of 17 which means he's got a very high chance of being injured and whilst with some players you can forgive that because maybe they're only squad players that aren't on huge wages the baller for most clubs is going to be one of the star men on one of the highest wage packets now I do say is the most controversial one because I think even outside of that he is a player with great ability and you could definitely get some great performance performances out of him but if you are going to buy him just be wary of that injury proneness that he does have. Before we continue with the other nine players in this list though if you do go on to enjoy the video whether it's really useful or you're just feeling nice we would massively appreciate it if you could do us the favor of smashing that like button it really helps in the YouTube algorithm. YouTube will then push this video out to more people and hopefully we can put more people off signing any of these players. Comment down below as well the players that you've had bad experiences with in FM even if it is controversial we want to hear your takes and we might use them for a part two of this video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel we do daily football manager content and we're about to hit 175k subs so any support to that goal would be amazing but let's check out player number two and this is sporting club de portugal's dutch centre-back jerry saint just who has signed fairly recently a couple of seasons ago i believive from the bundesliga he originally played in the eredivisie moved to mines did well enough to earn himself a move over to the portuguese giants and he has been there ever since. But with three years left on his deal, an evaluation of about 15 million, he's a centre-back that can play the ball well and is physically very imposing and very fast. On paper, he looks like a good option, but you will see he has a hamstring injury. Now, that isn't just a chance injury. In fact, Jerry St. Just is one of the few players in Football Manager 24 who has an injury proneness rating of 20. Now, the ratings only go up to 20, which shows you just how injury prone Jerry might be. And whilst there might be a debate with someone like Dybala over, you know, if you can keep him fit, you might be okay. Even if you did manage Jerry's fitness to the highest level, there's a very good chance he's going to end up injured again at some point. So for me, I'd steer clear and I'd definitely look for other centre-back options. Even though he's so talented and so fast, you don't want to be dealing with a player who's on the injury table for the majority of your save. But injury proneness isn't the only reason I would tell you to avoid a player. In fact, there's some other hidden attributes that I think put me off more when looking looking at players like this. Most of the time you won't know about these hidden attributes other than in a scout report that you get in the pros and cons when you scout a player. Sometimes these will be highlighted. But one of the things I really struggle with with players is a low rating for consistency. I'll quickly say it in case you don't already know, some of you might, but consistency in Football Manager on a rating of 1 to 20 is how often a player plays to the attributes that you see on screen. So if you have a player with 10 consistency out of 20, there's pretty much a 50 50% chance that in your games he will perform at the level of the attributes that you see here. Physical attributes I don't believe are affected but if we took this player here, Dilrillo Sun, it would mean that his finishing is at 11 only 50% of the time. His dribbling is at 17 only 50% of the time. So on half of those occasions he's actually going to be performing at a 
lower level than what you might expect when you originally check out their attributes. Now 10 for consistency wouldn't be too bad really, but Feyenoord's 25 year old Dutch winger De Rosen actually has a consistency rating of 5. Now that is worrying, it doesn't exactly work like this, but you can imagine that as almost 75% of the time he wouldn't actually play to the level that you'd expect here. Now often if you do get those players that look like they have great attributes but in game don't seem to perform well, there's a good chance they don't have a great consistency rating. And whilst this versatile winger might look like a good option at Feyenoord, an international available for three or four million with only a few years left on his deal, I would not go for him. Most of the time, he's not going to perform at the level that you're going to see here. And whilst you might get some good performances out of him now and then, on most occasions, he's just not going to be worth the effort or the transfer fee involved to play him at your team. And our next player is none other than Ryan Kent, former Liverpool prospect who ended up at Rangers and played for them for a number of years, who now now plays for Fenerbahce out in Turkey. He's only just recently joined that club, so he actually isn't someone that you're able to sign straight away. But if in a year or so into your save, you suddenly become interested in Ryan Kent and you want to sign him, much like Dilro Sun, I would suggest you avoid him. He has a consistency rating of six, and whilst he isn't very injury prone, and he's actually pretty good in big matches, I just don't think he's worth the effort. Like I say, consistency doesn't really affect physical attributes, but to have those technicals maybe not at the highest level on a regular occasion, considering they're not amazing straight away anyway, I don't know. For me, I just think he's someone that you should steer clear of. I think there's better options out there. For five or six million, he's going to cost you. He's going to ask for a decent wage as well. His attributes aren't really world class, and you can even get quicker wingers out there if that's what you'd like Kent for. So for me, I'd steer clear of Ryan Kent. Not very consistent at all. Before we carry on with this list, I just want to let you guys know I do have my own Football Manager channel as well, linked in the description. Over there, we do Football Manager rebuilds and YouTube shorts about wonder kids you might not have heard of. So if you like my content, Content. I'm sure you'd enjoy that as well. Once this video is done, if you could check it out, I'd be hugely, hugely appreciative. We're trying to get 30k subs over there, and currently we're just about to hit 29,000, so we really are closing in on that number. So any support will be massive for me and just will be amazing. So thank you to anyone who does check the channel out, but let's get back to the list. And we have a free agent as our next player, the only free agent in this list, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to include him because he is one of the best free agents in the game. It's Jean. Pierre, he's a former player of Gremio, who is actually the club that I'm wearing today. That wasn't intentional at all, but he has been let go. He is a free agent and he has got some great ability. Good long shots, good first touch, very well rounded technically. And whilst his mentals and physicals don't really stand out too much, a six foot attacking midfielder is definitely a good option for free. And he's only 25, so it's not like he's getting towards the end of his career. Now, Jean Pierre isn't necessarily really injury prone or really inconsistent or bad in important matches matches but he's got a little bit of all three sprinkled into him that just put me off his injury proneness is just below a rating of 15 so whilst he isn't super injury prone that is going to be a worry and on top of that his important matches and consistency ratings all drop below a level of 10 which maybe isn't the worst thing in the world but when you combine all three together I think you're just going to leave yourself disappointed he's one of the few in this list I think you could probably work around it he probably still will be a good player considering you're not paying any money for him as a free agent as far as free agents go it's not too bad but I think on most occasions I would avoid trying to sign him I think there's better players out there who aren't going to disappoint you as much and whilst he is a free agent and most players will cost you money I still think you should definitely take those hidden attributes in consideration before offering the Brazilian a contract the only goalkeeper in this list is Luca Zidane who is of course the son of Zinedine Zidane he's a 25 year old under 20 French international who's playing his football for Ibar out in the Spanish division formerly playing for Real Madrid, then moved to Vallecano and then to Ibar. So he's playing in the second division. He played a full season by the looks of it in 2022-2023 for the Spanish side and he's valued at about £1 million. As far as goalkeepers go, he's not too bad for that fee. Yes, he's 5 foot 11, but on paper, outside of that, he does look like a good sweeper keeper option if you're looking for maybe a backup or if you are a lower level team. Unfortunately though, much like the player we previously looked at, Lucas Zidane is going to struggle in a few 
areas. Firstly, his consistency in important matches all fall below a level of seven, which is going to mean that on most occasions, he's not going to be up for a big match and he's not going to play well and he's not going to be consistently good in your goal. He's probably going to make some howlers. And even though goalkeepers don't get injured all that much in Football Manager, or at least they didn't used to in FM24, it definitely happens more often. He actually has a high injury proneness rating of again, just below 15. So combine all three together. And I think you've got a goalkeeper that you should probably just walk away from and go and scout someone else. Kyle Walker-Peters is an interesting one. The former Tottenham player now plays for Southampton, who of course have been relegated. And it does mean that one of Southampton's star players in this occasion is fairly available. For about 30 million, Chelsea and Crystal Palace are interested in the multi-talented fullback who can play left and right. And on paper, he looks very good when it comes to going forward. He's a former England international and he only has two years left on his contract. Now, the reason that I want to point Kyle Walker-Peters out as potentially not the best signing is often that contract will expire and he will be a free agent available to all of you guys to pick up in your saves. But unfortunately, despite the fact that he is pretty consistent and he's not too injury prone, Kyle Walker-Peters is not great when it comes to those big matches. I did a filter on every single player in this full database in Football Manager, looking for players with at least 120 current ability and then filtering on those hidden attributes in game. And actually we found that Kyle Walker-Peters was one of the worst players of a decent ability when it came to that important matches rating. He's only got a five and it's gonna mean that when you come around to those big matches, he is going to disappoint you more than likely. Now, being the kind of player he is, there's a good chance he is going to play in a lot of big matches. He'll likely move from Southampton, more than likely a team in the top 10 of the Premier League. He's going to play pretty regularly, getting towards the prime of his career. And to have him letting you down in those big games, it's going to be pretty annoying. So I definitely wouldn't smash 30 million quid on him. If you do manage to get him as a free agent, then fair enough. I'd just be very wary of him when it comes to those big matches. But either way, Carl Walker-Peters is someone that I suggest you should probably look elsewhere from. Spanish winger Oscar Aranda is another one where I'd likely look somewhere else when it comes to spending three or four million pounds of your cash. The Spanish 21 year old has recently moved to the Portuguese divisions from Real Madrid and likely will do pretty well there and catch the interest of a lot of your scouts. But I would suggest if you do see that scout report come in, just disregard it. Don't acknowledge it because even though he looks like he could be a talented option for a fairly cheap fee, he doesn't have great consistency or important matches. Both of them are at a low level. I think on most occasions you'll be left disappointed by the former Real Madrid wonder kid and for a few million quid there are better players out there in his position for 21 years of age he does have some nice attributes first touch passing technique and dribbling with some decent physicals as well but those hidden mental attributes tick it over for me and make him a player that I just wouldn't sign in your saves another final player that we've got in this video that I just don't think is worth signing is Marcus Lopez the Peruvian international is 23 years of age and looks like a good talented left back promising option with plenty of years left in the tank and lots of international experience and that is exactly what he is but once again the hidden attributes put me off and tell me otherwise that he might not be the world's best signing because his important matches and consistency are at a low level and for three million pounds even though he looks like a bargain that for me would put me off. I know that in most occasions, he's not going to perform well enough. Within a year, I'll be looking for a new left back most likely. And it's just not worth wasting your time with a player like that. Again, with all of these players, you could definitely have a good time with them. You could definitely have them play well. But on most occasions, for most people, it's just not going to work, I don't think. So for me, Marcus Lopez is a notable player that I'm including in this list. And the final player is Kevin Velasco. Now in this video, I could have included a bunch of players that you're never ever going to sign anyway. You know, first, 34 year olds who are injury prone of course you're not likely going to sign them so I did try and pick 10 players that you might actually consider signing in your saves so we're not just looking at those real bad players it's the ones that look good but maybe just aren't as good as they seem on paper now Kevin Velasco is one of a few that I think maybe most people wouldn't know about but if your scouts ever did come across him he's a player with only a year left on his deal playing in the Mexican divisions and he does have an optional future fee after 15 matches for the Mexican side but if he doesn't get picked up there he will be a free agent even if he does get picked up by the Mexican club your scouts might still come across him because he's 26 he's dirt cheap and he's got some great attributes to go alongside it and he is actually fairly consistent but he's got an important matches rating of two 
which is obviously not good. Most big games, this guy is going to go missing. And on top of that, he has got an injury proneness rating of 15. So he's going to be injured on most occasions. So for me, I'd avoid. He'll be injured most of the time. And when he does come back and play, if it is against the big team, he may as well be injured because he's not going to do anything in those big matches by the sounds of it. So yes, Kevin Velasco, if he interests you, I would suggest look away, find someone else. So there's 10 players that I suggest that you don't sign in FM24, but I want to hear your guys' opinions. Let me know in the comments which player you've had no success with in the game someone that you thought is going to be great and just didn't turn out to be very good at all hopefully you have enjoyed the video smash the like button if you did thank you for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye